Logistics. I bet your eyes are already rolling back in your head. What could be more boring than talking about supply chains and factory layout and 1% efficiency gains? Hold on though, Tesla is proving just how critical logistics are to the success of a mass producing company and are also showing what happens when a hiccup happens in the supply chain, as has apparently happened with the new models S and X. Boring or not, logistics are a big part of why Tesla is so successful, so let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. To start with, let's discuss supply chain logistics. Here is something Elon Musk recently said at the 2021 Q1 earnings call. This, this quarter, and I think we'll continue to see that a, a little bit in Q2 and Q3, uh, so Q, Q1 was, was, had some of the most difficult supply chain challenges that we've ever experienced in the life of Tesla. Um, insane difficulties with, uh, with supply chains. Uh, with, with parts of, of over the whole range of parts. Um, obviously, people have heard about the, the the chip shortage. This is a this is a huge problem. And, and, and the thing about making a large complex manufactured object is, let's say you have first order approximation, ten thousand unique items. If even one of those items is slow, that sets your rate. Just one. Doesn't matter how it can be tr so trivial. We, we've had. Uh, Production, production stop because of carpet in the trunk. We had production stop because of a USB cable. At one point for the model S, the, we literally raided every uh, electronics store in the Bay Area. For, for, for a few days there, nobody could buy a USB cable in the Bay Area because we, we, we went and bought them all to put them in the car. Um, <laughs> literally. And there's... There's like hundreds of stories like that. So anyway, that, that's the solving that those constraints and 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 a, and a logistics problem that makes World War II look trivial. I, I'm not kidding. Like the scale is insane. So let's start with that last part. Supply chain logistics is harder than World War II. That's quite a statement given the insanity of preparing for something like D-Day. And yeah, I'm kind of a World War II history buff, so I really do pay attention to all of that stuff. And the supply chain logistics and how the United States essentially created this gigantic machine during World War II that actually led to the prosperity and, you know, a lot of the effects that we're still feeling, you know, 70 plus years later on. But anyway, Elon Musk saying that Tesla's supply chain logistics are more difficult than World War II is quite an impressive statement, probably something of a hyperbole, but still, it does indicate just how large the problem is. The other thing that's incredible is talking about how one part out of 10,000 can hold everything up when you're mass producing a product, right? So it's kind of fascinating that he talks about going to find USB cables in the Bay Area around Fremont, which is the San Francisco, Berkeley, that sort of area where Fremont factory is. But the fact that they actually had to literally go to electronic stores and raid the USB cables to try to keep the production line going when everything was stalled out because of one stupid cable. So you can see just how something incredibly minor could create huge problems. But beyond that, as Elon Musk said, quarter one of 2021 was a terrible quarter for supply chain logistics. One of the big issues was the global chip shortage. And the chips, by the way, are not just the infotainment chips and stuff, but they're all the things that actually run the car. They're all the little embedded chips that make things operate and work efficiently and have airbags working properly and all of that other stuff. And this chip shortage, of course, has affected all car companies. And many of them have had to reduce their production pretty substantially over the past Past quarter or so. So why the Model S and X delays? Well, I think one of the big reasons is that Tesla kind of considers these a little bit of experimental vehicles. They're at the forefront of Tesla's technology and they're working on some things that haven't really been hashed out yet, like a tri-motor drive, for example. So all new drivetrain, you can look at the infotainment system inside the car and you can see just how much more robust that is than the other cars. They have what Elon Musk refers to as a PlayStation 5 level of infotainment, you know, capacity capacity or compute power. And all of that, of course, comes with having to have a lot of new chips and have to have them in very unique in and interesting combinations. So, of course, anything in this new technology, even including perhaps a steering yoke or something like that, right? If there's anything that's a holdup anywhere, it's going to impact Tesla's ability to produce these cars on a massive scale. 
So of course the advantage of the S and X is that they are relatively low production number cars. Although Elon Musk did say they're expecting to hit two to two and a half thousand vehicles per week by the end of the year. So that's not that low of a production rate. But still, this is a much smaller production rate than like the Model 3 and the Model Y. So they can do more experimental things and they can kind of try to work things up. Of course, the 4680 batteries that they're preparing for, the Plaid Plus Model S, are also a huge thing. And that's an entire other supply chain aspect. But anyway, the upshot of all of this is that with new products, especially one element like a new chip or something can hold up the entire supply chain. So the likelihood is that there's one or more chips that have to go in the Model S and Model X that simply have not been able to be produced at mass scale like Tesla was expecting and that's what's causing the holdup. Of course, it could also be something as mundane as the steering yoke and for some reason they're not able to produce that in quantity at the quality that they need. If you want to think a little comparatively, you can think about the launch of the Tesla Model 3 versus the Model Y. The Tesla Model 3 was all new. They were coming up with all new techniques on how to build it. They were coming up with all new supply chain logistics, etc., etc. And the ramp up, therefore, was pretty terrible. But the Model Y ramp up was not only great, but it was actually faster than expected. So you can see how they've learned, and also by sharing a bunch of parts and things and a bunch of techniques, they've been able to parlay the things that they learned for building the Model 3 into building the Model Y. And that's why the ramp up happens so much more quickly and efficiently. And of course, another way that Tesla helps themselves out a ton is by vertical integration. They essentially are getting mining, materials, designing their own chips, manufacturing a bunch of the parts, and creating even new materials and so forth. So essentially, they're trying to make as much as they can in-house, which of course removes a lot of the dependence on third parties and makes them more robust to supply chain disruptions. One thing that Tesla has done that's pretty unique to the industry and incredible is their ability to pivot from using expected chips to new ones or expected parts to new ones. Essentially, the fact that they have a huge brain trust or incredibly smart people working there allows them not to be stuck with what others give them or with legacy code. They essentially can recode and validate for new hardware on the fly if necessary. This is incredible and is why Tesla was able to make and sell a record number of cars during a quarter that demolished most other manufacturers' production rate. In a moment, let's talk factory logistics. But first, if you enjoyed this video, please do like it so other people can find it, because that's how YouTube's algorithm works. And of course, subscribe for more of this. And by the way, we are super, super close to 20,000 subscribers, which is kind of mind-blowing. So thank you all so much for that. Also, don't forget about Weeble. If you open an account, you get one stock valued at up to $250. And if you fund the account with $100, you get another stock valued up to $1,600. And now you can buy and sell crypto on Webull as well. Definitely check out the link in the description and you can help out the channel by opening an account. Thank you. Also, as always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You all are wonderful. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. We actually have two new patrons since the last video. Paul Henry and Cherian Olikara. I hope I said that last one correctly. Anyway, thank you both so much. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. Also, don't forget about our merch store, which has Don't Mess With Tesla t-shirt and a Tesla Bot t-shirts and a bunch of other t-shirts and tumblers and mugs, etc., etc. If you look around and you purchase something, you help out the channel. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking a link and going shopping helps out the channel. All right, so what about the factory itself? Well, for one thing, they are huge, as I found out when I visited Terra, Texas in Austin. Wow, so here we go. I'll put in some B-roll footage of us driving by at like 75 miles an hour, but this factory is kind of unimaginably large. It, it, it feels like when I went to the SpaceX facilities, I was like, okay, I can kind of figure this. It's all rel relatively small, and I know that the ship itself is going to be amazing when it's all stacked up and really high, but this entirely is, uh, I think you can't really see it that well, but I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's eight cranes I can see right now, and a whole bunch of other ones on the other side that are just, I mean, this is just massive. <laughs> So just looking behind me, you can see just how big this factory is. It's just monstrous, but it's not an empty shell, of course. These factories have to be filled up in the most space efficient and production efficient manner possible. And that's not just in 2D, but in 3D, right? So a lot of people would think about the floor space and they would think about how to lay this out. But Elon Musk has discussed how they think from first principles and actually think about three-dimensional space and how they can fill up the 3D space in the most efficient way possible. By filling up the factory from bottom 
bottom to top as well as side to side, you can create a more efficient workflow and you can make things go faster through the factory. And of course, as we have discussed before, Elon Musk is a physicist by training and so he's used to thinking in first principles manners, which means you break it all back down to the basics and you build it back up again. You don't say, what has somebody else done already? You say, what is the best way to do it? That's a whole different way of thinking. And thinking in three dimensions in a factory is a really unique and new way of thinking about filling up space and making the factory more efficient. Of course, as Elon Musk has also talked about, no part is the best part. So another aspect of logistics is reducing complexity. So with the Model Y, for example, taking a whole bunch of parts that make up the back end of the Model 3 and turning it into one gigacast, as I've talked about in this episode up here, that reduces the number of parts, it reduces the complexity of fitting them together, it reduces the number of robots and people needed to put all the parts together, and it speeds things up. So it's just amazing. So again, logistics is not about making more stuff or getting more things. A lot of times logistics is about reducing that and reducing that and reducing that down to the fewest amount of parts and the most efficient way of creating them possible. So obviously in this case, less is more. Less parts is better, better, better. The upshot of all of this is that they're trying to get things through the factory faster. Uh, Elon Musk talks about a turtle, you know. <laughs> he wants them to produce cars at like a brisk walking pace, not like a turtle crawling pace. So cars, like the materials come in the back end of the factory and they're spit out the front end of the factory at a rate of a walking speed rather than a turtle crawling speed. So that's what they're looking for, and that's an incredible challenge. And of course, at the heart of all of that is logistics. And of course, the design of the factories probably involves a great deal of computer optimization code where they're using machine learning and other things to try to figure out the most efficient way in three-dimensional space to put all of this stuff together and to make it as efficient and quick as possible. Some very cool examples of this, one of them is the 4680 production line in Fremont, California. This is a pilot production line, but as you can see, they've, they've taken a lot of information from things like bottling companies and other types of factories that produce components at incredibly fast rates, and they basically designed this factory so that it will roll out these 4680 battery cells without any kind of stopping in the production line. So everything just flows through as quickly and efficiently as possible. Also, there's an experimental Cybertruck production line in Nevada, and they're working on that, I think, in order to make it as efficient as possible when they get to Austin, Texas. So by the time they get the full factory built, they'll already know technically how to go ahead and implement that in the larger factory by utilizing this pilot experimental production line as a method of prototyping the steps that are necessary to create these Cybertrucks at mass scale. So what the 4680 and Cybertruck pilot production lines are showing is that Tesla is learning from history. They're not waiting until they have the factory built to figure out how to build the parts inside it. They're figuring that out as they build the factories. So by the time Giga Berlin comes online, they'll be able to utilize the battery production techniques they've already learned in Fremont to be able to construct a very, very efficient 4680 battery production plant in Berlin. And by the time Terra Texas comes online, they'll have figured out how to build the Cybertruck, at least in principle, at a mass scale so that they'll be able to get up to speed much, much more quickly than they would be otherwise. Anyway, all of these different techniques in both supply chain and factory logistics lead to more efficiency. And more efficiency leads to quicker production, and quicker production leads to lower costs, and lower costs lead to more profits and or lower costs passed on to the consumer. And in general, of course, Tesla's rollouts have been getting better and better and better. The models S and X are a little bit of a hiccup at this point, but I really do think the worldwide chip shortage has had a major impact on their ability to produce those at speed. So overall, Tesla is working their magic on factory layout and on supply chain logistics, on vertical integration, and on being flexible in their ability to pivot to another solution if the obvious one gets broken. All of this is why Tesla has grown at such an insane rate and plans to continue at over 50% growth year over year for at least five more years. So boring or not, logistics, both supply chain and factory form, are central to Tesla as a mass production company. They not only build the best cars on the market, but they are doing it at scales that boggle the mind. And that's only going to grow as Giga Berlin and Terra Texas come online later this year. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and informative. If you did, please do like and subscribe. And in the meantime, please feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Until next time, bye-bye.